Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this video tutorial, I'll show you how to draw a vintage penny farthing bicycle in Illustrator. Before we get started with this video tutorial, let's look and see what it is that we're going to be making. This is the penny farthing bicycle that I'm going to show you how to create in Illustrator. It might look as if it is a complex illustration, but it's actually very easy to do and it will help you learn Illustrator by learning some cool techniques to use in the program. To get started with our illustration, I'm going to create a new document. So I'm choosing File and then New. Mine's going to be 2000 points by 2000 points and it's an RGB image. So I'll just click OK. Now you might notice if you've been watching my videos in the past that I'm using a lighter interface here on Illustrator today. It was requested by a visitor to my YouTube channel. They said that they would prefer to see a lighter interface. So I'm just trialing it. If you like it, let me know. If you don't like it, let me know that too. But this is of course Adobe Illustrator CC 2015. But there's nothing in this video that wouldn't work in lots of earlier versions of Illustrator. This is really not specific to 2015 by any means. We're going to create a circle. So I'm going to select the ellipse tool and I'm going to make a circle in the middle of the document. This is going to be the center of the wheel of our penny farthing. So I just want a small circle. It's going to get a little bit bigger later on. I'm going to fill it for now with black and I'm going to turn the stroke off. Before we go too much further, let's go and find a color to use. So I'm going to my swatches palette here. I'm going to create a new color group and just click here to create a new color group. I don't actually want black in that, but I'm going to need to put another color in first. So let's just go and dump this sort of sepia brown color into this color group and then I can remove the black from it. And this is going to be the color of my shape. So I've already added it as the color of my shape. I'm also going to remove all the other colors from my palette for now. So I'm just going to click on one, shift click on the last one, and just drag and drop them all onto the trash can. So we're basically just working with this shade of brown. So that's got the center of our wheel. Now we need to create the outside of the wheel. So we can duplicate this. I'm going to choose Edit Copy and then Edit Paste in Place. That's just creating a second circle immediately on top of the first one. I'm going to the Selection tool, press the letter V or click the Selection tool and just start dragging out. Now as I'm dragging out, I'm going to add the Shift key because that's going to constrain this to a circle. And then I'm going to add the Alt key to make sure that it's all centered around the original circle. This is pretty critical since we're trying to create a tire or a wheel of our penny farthing. So this is going to be about the size of it. So I'm going to let go. Now, of course, it's been filled with brown, but we can just click here to swap the fill and the stroke color. And for now, I'm just going to make the stroke just a little bit thicker. Now let's look at the spokes on the wheel and we're going to create those using the line segment tool. So I'm going to click on the line segment tool. I'm going to click on the wheel here. I want to make sure that I'm lined up with the wheel and I'm just going to drag it down on an angle so it anchors just on the side of my circle. And I'm thinking it's too wide for the spokes of my wheel so I'm just going to decrease it. I'm thinking probably to about five. Let's just test that. That's probably just a smidgen too wide. Let's go to four. Okay, so then I'm going to make a second one. So again with the line tool, I'm going to add a line clicking on the wheel, this rim of the wheel, and then just clicking at the edge of the shape here. Now at this point, I can change the rotation of this particular line. I'm going to click on the line. I'm going to make sure that I just click on this anchor point. And what I'm concerned about is where these two lines intersect because what's going to happen is this, this is going to be all the way around the wheel. And if it's not intersecting the way I want it to, I need to change it now. So I'm just bringing it a little bit closer, but again, I need to make sure that this is dragged all the way out so that it intersects with the wheel. So this is what the spokes are going to look like. So I'm going to the selection tool here. I'm going to select both of these lines. And what I'm going to do is rotate them around this midpoint. So I'm going to click on the rotate tool and then I'm going to alt click on the very center of this circle. 
I want to make sure that I've got the center of the circle and I'm going to alt click there and what that does is that makes it the rotation point for this shape. I'm going to click on preview and I'm going to start to rotate and I found that about 15 degrees is a pretty good rotation here. So I'm going to rotate that there and just click copy and that's given me the first two spokes of the wheel. Now provided I do nothing else and simply hold down the control key and press the letter D, I will repeat that transformation copy process and I'm going to do that over and over again until I get all the way around the spoke of this wheel and back to the beginning. So it's control or command D on the Mac and this has been done perfectly. You can see that all the spokes of the wheel now exist inside the wheel so that's a really good result. So let's just go and finish off the wheel. I want to select the wheel shape and I'm going to make another duplicate of this shape. So again, edit copy, edit paste in place. So now I have the second one selected. Again, I'm going to start dragging out to make it a bit bigger. I'm going to add the shift key so it's a circle and add the alt key so that it's centered around the same point. Just going to drag this out a little bit and then I'm going to widen this one. So increase the stroke here so that we get a slightly more interesting wheel on our penny farthing. I mentioned earlier that we would probably enlarge the center of this shape to cover up any little bits that were sticking out. But if I go in here, just look in here, there are no bits that are sticking out. So there's no need to enlarge the circle here. If you had some bits that were sticking out and that didn't look particularly neat, then you could just enlarge that middle circle. But I'm looking at it and just thinking it's pretty big anyway, so it's not going to really need it. I'm going to go ahead now and create the second wheel of the penny farthing and we're going to do that the same way. We're going to start with a circle or an ellipse. We'll select the ellipse tool, hold the shift key to drag out a circle and then we're going to invert the color so it's filled with the darker color. And then we're going to copy it with edit copy, edit paste in place. Go to the selection tool and then drag out from one of the corner handles adding the shift key and the alt key so that we get a concentric circle. I'm just going to build it out about as large as I think it needs to be and then we're just going to flip here to make that the stroke color not the fill color and we're going to increase the stroke. Now at this point if it's not in the right place we can go and select both these shapes and just move it down so that it's aligned with the base of this other wheel. We probably want it in a little bit too so I'm just going to move it in there. We could move it again later but I'm moving it now. So now we're going to do the spokes. So again I'm just going to check this. I think it's a little bit too wide of a stroke so I've just decreased it down to five. Let's zoom in here so that we can see it as we work. Again we're going to get the line tool and we're going to draw our two lines clicking and dragging for one line just making sure that it's as wide as it needs to be. I think it's probably a bit too wide so we're going to take it down to three points and then doing the second one. Again just intersecting with the circle here. Let's click away. Those two lines look reasonably good, although I just might change the point at which they intersect. It's going to grab this point and perhaps move it out a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to the Select tool, select both lines. I'm going to the Rotation tool here. I'm going to click on the Rotate tool. Then I'm going to hover over the very center of the circle and Alt or Option click here to set that as the center point for the rotation. Then when the Rotate dialog appears, I'm going to select this time a slightly larger value. I'm thinking that probably 20 degrees will be a better rotation for this. Click Copy. And then I'm going to Control or Command D all the way around to create the spokes on this second wheel. And then let's press Control or Command 0 to go back to seeing the image at its full size. I'm going to click on the outer circle here. I'm going to duplicate it, edit copy, edit paste in place. 
Again, with the Select tool selected, I'm going to start dragging outwards. We'll add the Shift key and the Alt key, and then just drag it back in so that we're creating a sort of second circle around the original one. And we're just going to increase the stroke weight of that. And perhaps just decrease the stroke weight of the innermost circle there. I'm going to select both these shapes and just move them in a little bit. I think that they're probably not in exactly the right position. If I want to align all these shapes, I'm going to select this wheel and I'm going to group it with Object Group. I'm going to select this wheel and group it with Object Group. Now if I select both these shapes and choose the Align to Bottom, the shapes are going to be aligned so that their bases are in alignment because they were groups. Nothing else has happened to the shapes within the group. They haven't been distorted or thrown out. You want to create them as a group before you do something like that. So now let's go and create the actual framework of the bicycle. And we're going to do that with the line segment tool. So I'm just going to click sort of in the middle of this shape and just drag upwards. Now this is going to be the thing that holds the handlebar. So I'm going to make sure I hold the shift key so that it is aligned in a straight line. It's going to go up high enough for the handlebars. I'm also going to widen this because it needs to be quite a bit wider. Thinking that's probably a good width for now. Now the pen tool, we're going to use that to create this shape. And it's really the only shape we're going to create with the pen tool. And it is quite easy. So if you're not used to using the pen tool, don't worry. It is really easy. I'm going to show you how. I'm going to click on the pen tool. And we're going to start by clicking about where we want this shape to start. So we want it to go and follow the bicycle wheel around. So I'm going to click and drag here. And I'm going to drag in a horizontal direction because that's the direction I want to take off in. So just dragging out to the right here. And then I'm going to go down here because this is where I want the shape to sort of twist around. So I'm thinking probably about here. And I'm going to drag downwards at this point. And then just keep twisting it until it sits exactly where I want it to sit. Now I'm thinking this point is probably a little bit close to the tire, but I'm going to fix that in a minute. And I'm just going to click here on the middle of this wheel. And that's my shape. It's not perfect, but it's all I need right now. I'm going to control and click away to stop the pen tool from drawing. Now I'll go to the direct selection tool because that will let me select these points. So I'm looking for this point here. And as I said, I think it's a little bit close to the tire. So I'm just going to move it out a little bit. And I'm just going to shape it using these handles. Looking for a nice even curve there that's sort of following the curve of the tire. Now at this point, this handle here needs to be shortened. So I'm going to hold the Alt or Option key and look for this little plus sign by the arrow. If you get two arrows at this point, you don't want to go ahead because that means you're duplicating the point. You just want a white arrow with a plus sign beside it. And I'm just going to start dragging up to shorten this curve. Now that it's unhooked from the other handle, I don't have to hold the Alt or Option key as I reshape this handle because it's permanently unhooked from the other one. And what I'm going to do is just keep moving this up until I get a nice curve into the base here. I'm thinking the curve is probably a little bit steep, so I'm going to move this up a little bit. Bring this handle in a little bit. And then just drag this one down. If you don't get it perfect the first time, don't hesitate to keep working on these curves. It's all good skills with the pen tool, or at least with working with handles. OK, when I'm happy with that, I can go ahead and create the seat and the handlebars. So we're going to zoom in to this area of the image using the zoom tool. For the seat, I'm going to use an ellipse shape as a starting point. So I'm just going to drag out. A, an ellipse. I'm going to flip the colors so that it's filled with my brown color. I'm going to click on the direct selection tool, click on this anchor point here, and click on this so that we make it a sort of pointy end. 
Now because I'm using Illustrator CC 2015 and a lot of the earlier CC versions now have these rounded ends on them, so I'm just going to drag in here to make this a rounded edge. If you're working in an earlier version of Illustrator, you'll have to round that yourself using the handles. I'm going to just drag down here and make a sort of seat shape out of this. I'm thinking that this is probably a little bit too rounded here. You can just perfect the shape there for the seat of the penny farthing. I'm just going to move it into position and then Control or Command Zero to check it out against the full image. And it's a little bit big, so I'm just going to drag it in using the Shift key to make it just a little bit smaller. And I'll position it into position on the penny farthing. And now let's do the handlebars. Again, I'm going to zoom into that area so I can see things clearly. Now this particular line here has got a hard top on it. So I'm re going to reselect the line here and go to Strokes. And I want to give it a rounded cap. So I've done that now. Now let's go and get the pen tool again. Very simple, this shape. I'm going to click and go out in this direction. That's a click and drag. And then I'm going to go down here and I'm going to click and drag upwards. And that's it. So I'm going to control click away from this shape. Now let's go and get the shape and do something with it. I'm going to stretch it out a little bit. I'm also going to apply a width profile to it. These are shipped with Illustrator. And I kind of like this width profile. The problem is, is it's probably thicker at this end and thinner at this end when I want it the other way around. Well, it's easy to change the direction of that by clicking the pen tool and then just click on the starting point to the line and that just flips it around. Control or Command click away to deselect the selection or the pen tool. I'm going to move this into position. If I want to widen this end, I can do so using the width tool. It shares a toolbar position with all these other tools, but it's the width tool that we want. It's going to click on the very end of the line and then just drag upwards to just round off the end of the line. And you can change the width of the line really easily using the width tool. But I'm pretty happy with that. Let's Control or Command Zero to get back to seeing our entire shape. I'm going to select everything now that it's done and I'm going to group them with Object Group. Now I can pull them down a little bit into the illustration. If you just came here to learn how to create a penny farthing bike, then that's our penny farthing. If you want to see how I finish off the image by adding a texture behind it, then stay with me and we're going to add a texture behind this image. To finish off my illustration, what I want to do is to fill the background with a sort of vintage pattern. Now I went online and I found a vintage pattern. I'm just going to show you the website where I found it. It was allfreedownload.com and it's this damask pattern that I just downloaded. Now I've opened it in Windows Explorer and here is the file and I've gone ahead and opened it in Illustrator. Now if I want to turn this into a pattern, there's one thing that you can't add in patterns in Illustrator is guides and this has got guides in it. So I'm just going to open my layers palette here. I'm going to open up the panel and I'm going to go and find the guides. And here are the guides at the top. So I want to take all of these four guides and just get rid of them because I can't add those to a pattern. Now I'm going to select my shape and I'm going to choose Edit and then Copy. I'm going to my artwork and I'm going to choose Edit and Paste. And I'm just going to move it with the Move tool out of the way. So this is my pattern piece. Now with my Swatches palette open, I can drag and drop this into the Swatches palette so it becomes a pattern that I can now use in Illustrator. I'm going to remove it here from the artwork. So let's go back now and we'll select the Rectangle tool and I'm going to drag out a rectangle that is the size of the artboard. And I'm going to click on my pattern because I want to tile that as the pattern for my illustration. Now let's go to the Layers 
palette here and we're going to drag the rectangle with the pattern below the original shape. So this is my original artwork here and this is the pattern piece here. I'm going to need the appearance panel so I'm going to click here on the appearance panel because this fill is a little darker than I want it to be so I'm just going to click on opacity. I'm going to reduce its opacity right down so that we get just the hint of this sort of vintage background, this damask background. And then if I want to colour it, I can do so. I'm going to add a new fill, so click on Add New Fill. And it comes in as the same damask background, but we don't want that. We can just go and fill it with a colour. So I'm just going to click on white as the colour, but then let's go over here to recolour our white. So I'm going to colour it something like a sort of bluey green. I'm thinking probably a colour like this. And now we're going to move it around. So it looks like I've got some extra fills here that I actually didn't want. Let's just see what we've got. So I'm going to remove this fill. I'm going to put this fill just above the second one. So we've got a no stroke at the top, our blue fill over the top of our damask. So I'm going to open up the opacity for the blue fill and I'm going to change the blend mode because by changing the blend mode I can now blend these two layers together. And I'm just looking for a blend mode that's going to give me the effect that I want. I think that my blue colour is too intense so I'm actually going to go to colour dodge and select that but I'm going to go to the blue colour and just lighten it off now. So let's go here and let's just lighten and brighten that a little bit and click OK. And I'm just going to close that panel up. So here we have now our finished illustration. It has a sort of vintage pattern background behind it. It is a penny farthing bike and I hope that you've enjoyed this video tutorial and that you're ready now to go and create a illustration like this yourself. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more video tutorials here on my YouTube channel and consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.